Hi, good morning, Andrew. I'm Valerie from the Hollywood Times. Hi, Valerie. Thank, thank you for joining us. I hope you're not too tired. No, I'm good, you, yeah. Oh, thank good. You. I know you have a big day here. So, son of a critch. Wow. Uh, funny doesn't quite describe this show. It's quirky, the moose getting hit in front of, you know, uh, the house in the morning and then ending up as the night's meal was hilarious along the, you know, the family redhead bullies, the foxes and social socializing at wakes. Is it the typical Canadian humor versus American humor? There is. I, we definitely steer into the Canadian sensibility on this one. And but I think what what that means to me and what it means to I feel the the creative team on the show is it's a grounded series. It's an authentic series. Um, from, from a point of view of, of comedy, it's, it's not a comedy series that is fueled by jokes. It's a comedy series that's fueled by character. It's fueled by story. Uh, and, and what that means is that we really hope that what is bringing audiences to the show uh, are the relationships it's it's investing in characters it's wanting to see you know what happens with mark and what happens to his family and then it's those and and of course too it's about family and that's something that really seems to work and really seems to be something that that audiences are related relating to and connecting with and we see three generations living under one roof and just you know you can tap into generational comedy in a in a family setting like that so uh there's no deliberate uh or or explicit desire to separate from canada and the us but it's kind of maybe how we're programmed and how we see the world and that you know we we like these shows that are that are relatable and and we we, we can connect with Speaking of the cats, Benjamin Evan Ainsworth, you know, as young Mark is charming in his mature innocence and Malcolm uh, McDowell, uh, he's the perfect grandpa and Mark Critch himself is his own father. How was this amazing cast um, assembled? So casting this show was what with any show is is so critical and so important. And it's how do you find not only the right um, person for each role, but how do you find the right chemistry between those roles? And <clears throat> we knew the first piece that needed to land, of course, was the character of young Mark, uh, because you know that the that the 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 series hangs on that on that character and and will would hang on that performance. So we knew the stakes were very high. Uh, we did search from coast to coast in Canada um for for that role and not there was not the home run we were looking for we broadened our search to include the uk we brought on um casting directors casting directors that had done um uh dairy girls which was a comp of ours it's something we felt you know sensibility wise we we're, we're close to uh and we asked them to kind of broaden broaden the search and that's where we found uh benjamin evans ainsworth and he read it and right Right away, um, we knew it was our young Mark, and it's how did we, how do we make that work? And he had just come off of being Pinocchio in the Robert Zemeckis version, playing opposite Tom Hanks. Um, so, and he had, he had real chops for a young, young, young man. He was twelve years old when he joined us, um, but never, never met a professional actor who took it so seriously in terms of listening to well look listening to the script listening to the 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 showrunners finding the voice the dedication that he had to his craft and his performance was was wildly beyond his years um so that, that so we were very lucky to get him and he certainly delivered and and went beyond all the expectations we had and of course the second major piece to land was Malcolm and Malcolm again was we we thought outside of the box we knew that was an important relationship so who could what would that dynamic look like how could how could we make sure that there was heart and humor um, um coming out of that um and again we went to our uk 
my casting directors and we were like, we have this role. We'd like to broaden our, our search. Who do you suggest? And they're like, let's get it in front of Malcolm McDowell, which was just mind blowing to all of us. That's never, that was never a name that, that we would have come up with um, mostly because, you know, we're a Canadian show with a Canadian budget and it's just, you don't, you, you're kind of trained not to, to think that, that big, um, but we were definitely pointed in the right direction. And the casting directors were like, let's just get the script in front of him. See what he, he says. He read it. And then it almost became like a, a reverse casting where he was pitching himself on, on coming to the show. So, cause he just, the, the words leapt off the page. He, he saw what it was and he's been just such a wonderful person to work with. And that dynamic, that is, that's the heartbeat of the show. Nice. Those two characters. Yeah. Well, the show is Wonder Years meets the Goldbergs meets the middle. Does this show for a wide range of plot treatments within the basic framework of the story? Uh, the 11 year old Mark's coming of age as he struggles to cope with the bullies at school, both from the classmates and the nuns and to a lesser extent at home. Poor Mark has no privacy, seems to offer endless storylines. Well, we're lucky. So this this series, as you may know, is based off of Mark Critch's memoir. So so Mark is a household name in, in Canada. He's one of the, the strongest com comedy voices here. He's been on Canada's top political satire show for over 20 years. And he just has this rich story and rich history about growing up in in Newfoundland in the 80s and there is it was such an interesting it is an interesting place. But at that time, it was it had a lot going on. It was a province that was trying to find its identity and figure out who it was and where it sat um, in the Canadian culture. And Mark was kind of a leader in that. And um, he, a few years ago, decided to write a memoir. And that between him and the his friend and co-creator, Tim McAuliffe, they, they were like, maybe there's a show here and maybe that, you know, we should start talking about. It. And when you started to pull the thread on what was in there and the other stories that that Mark had experienced growing up, uh, there was a lot to mine there. And 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 through Mark's comedy lens and Tim McCall's comedy lens, uh, it's it's really turned into to what 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 we're seeing now, which is, you know, it's it's amazing to see the 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 audience reaction we're getting. And the music is amazing from 40s and 50s big band crooners, you know, Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin to 80s glam rock, Poison, and hard rock Van Halen, and even Rush, a nod to Canada's great band, you know. Where did that eclectic range of music find its inspiration? I mean, once again, that's Mark. This this story is okay. so authentic to Mark and his experience. And Mark, well, you know, he'll say that he was an old soul in an 11-year-old's body, and he did. And he was growing up, his parents were older than his classmates and cohorts. So his his sensibilities and tastes were really informed by what they were listening to. And it was sort of that big band, Frank Sinatra era. And so all of that is is true. And of course, then as he kind of became an adolescent and you, you know, his brother was exposed to, you know, exposing him to different types of music, that's where that happened. So it really is this um coming together of musical genres and it really works in the series wonderful well i just want to thank you for your time again andrew i've been waiting for a while to be able to speak to you i know things have been a little hectic out there in the entertainment land and um you know uh we're the hollywood times dot today and our uh our YouTube channel is the Hollywood Times official. And again, thank you for all your time. And your show is is really, really funny. And thank again, you so much. keep up yeah. the great work. Thank yeah. you. It's really nice to be with you. Okay. Thank you. Maybe one day in person. <laughs> yes, let's hope. Okay. Cool. Bye-bye. Thanks so much. Okay.